Hello everyone, CJ here. E3, the biggest video game expo of the year, had come and gone. Lots of really cool video games were announced and lots of new trailers were released. In my opinion, the best looking game of this year's E3 is none other than Cyberpunk 2077. While we, the general public, don't get to see the gameplay, the gaming press got a sneak peek and came out of the conference with a pile of new information. So now we know more about the game than ever before. As we get snippets of what we are going to get, it also means that we know what we are going to be missing out on. Cyberpunk 2077 is based on Mike Pondsmith's tabletop role-playing game Cyberpunk 2020. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what really awesome Cyberpunk 2020 features you are going to miss out on in 2077. Cyberpunk 2020 is a tabletop RPG like Dungeons & Dragons, but it has a completely different setting, sci-fi instead of fantasy, and also a different system. The basics of the game is slightly different, but similar. Instead of rolling a 20-sided dice and adding the relevant skill bonus to beat a challenger's difficulty class, a Cyberpunk player adds their character's relevant statistic, like reflex or intelligence, to their relevant skill and roll a 10-sided dice. In general, Cyberpunk is a more complicated game with lots of options, making it a crunchier game, closer to 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder. Being an RPG, Cyberpunk has a class system, or roles as they call it. But Eurogamer reported that your character in 2077, V, won't belong to a distinct class. He or she can develop skills related to the solo, netrunner, and techie roles. But in the RPG, the techie role is actually divided into two classes, mechanic and medical. The developers of 2077, CD Projekt Red, has not mentioned this, but I think we can make an educated guess that the techie skill tree may combine both tech classes into one. So skills that boost the power of your healing or performance enhancing drugs may come under the techie skill tree. Potentially, 2077 may cover four of the roles from 2020. In the tabletop game, each role comes with a package of starting skills derived from the basic skill list, but they have unique special abilities that define the class. Solo has combat sense. It works like spider sense, letting them sense traps, danger, and boost their combat initiative so that they can take that turn earlier in combat. The solo get to shoot first, if you know what I mean. Net runners can interface and hack systems. Mechanical techie can jury rig to temporarily repair or alter anything for a short period of time. Medical techie can perform surgeries and medical repairs. And that leaves us with six missing class roles. Rocker boys, medias, cops, corporates, fixers, and nomads. You know, it kinda makes sense that they are leaving these class roles out of the game. It's not because they are boring. Actually, I think it's the opposite. Their special abilities can be really overpowered and break the game easily if you use them right. Let's imagine this scenario. Your crew have been hearing rumors that the Ripper Clown Gang have gotten their hands on the purest batch of bluegrass in the market, and they've been making a killing selling it to impressionable kids. But your crew is not made up of a bunch of do-gooder NGO types. You want a piece of that dosh, and if you can clean the street of some scum, society can consider it a bonus. First thing first, you need to know their hideout. How do you do that? Get the fixer to do his job. With his street deal ability, you can use his underground network to find the location of the clown's hideout. Apparently, their base is a mobile lab, hidden in an abandoned warehouse, and they have ducked in, turning the place into a literal fortress. Going in guns a blaze is committing suicide by goons. So you have to be smart. This is where your corporate friend comes in. By reallocating his company resources, he buys the warehouse using corporation petty cash. Soon enough, inspectors start poking around the property. The clowns aren't going to be intimidated by some tablet pushers. But escalating the situation is as good as them advertising the location of their base to the cops and rival gangs. Even with their drug adult brains, they can figure out that the best move is to find a new hideout. So you wait for them to make their move. The moment they start their engine, your rocker boy announced to his diehard fans that they will hold a surprise concert along the clown's route. 
as flash mob of fans and unsuspecting crowds gather. They form a human barricade, locking the clown's mobile lab in position. This move actually has another purpose. It serves as the pretext for your cop buddy to escalate the situation and mobilize the heavy weaponry division. On scene, the cop creates an excuse to have the heavies search the suspicious mobile lab. Gunfight ensued, but Buddy is hiding in the safety of his bulletproof police car. By the time the gunfight ended, media vultures swoop in, led by your media bro. While the police is confused by the intense media attention, Buddy volunteers to drive the mobile lab back to the police headquarters. En route, he passed all the euro dollars he can skim without looking suspicious to Nomad. Some clowns spotted the exchange, but the moment she reached the freeway, she is safe because she is under the protection of her Mad Max family members. Maximum profit, minimum danger, zero combat. You can do this in Cyberpunk 2020. Another big change is the streamlining of the stats. There were originally nine different stats in 2020. Body, intelligence, reflex, cool, tech, luck, attractiveness, movement allowance, and empathy. According to reports, in 2077, there are only six stats. In reality, it is really just five stats, because strength and constitution were both part of the body stats. What's really interesting though, is that it is missing the empathy stat. Empathy is the base stat for skills like persuasion, seduction, and various social skills. And more importantly, this is where you derive your humanity points from. Every point of empathy is worth 10 humanity points and you lose humanity whenever you cybernetically enhance yourself. The loss of humanity is usually not fixed, making operations a really risky endeavor. With major overhauls like body plating, you stand to lose up to 4 600 dice worth of humanity. Losing some humanity is not that big of a deal, because for every 10 points of humanity lost, your character empathy only drops by 1 point. The figure is rounded down. So that's why some people can get away with some low-risk cyber fashion without losing any empathy. But if you overdo it though, you're going to go cold, like a piece of metal. At zero empathy, your character will get cyber psychosis and think that vending machines are their cousins. He or she is more machine than human now, and it is time for you to hand your character over to the game master. If your GM is merciful, your characters might get to live out the rest of their lives as a happy little toaster instead of getting iced by the police's psycho squad for murdering some randos off the street. There is a cure for cyberpsychosis, but it really depends on how much Cheetos are you willing to buy your GM to save your characters. Another thing 2077 players will be missing out on is the high mortality rate, for better or worse. Well, I'm not 100% sure if 2077 won't have this feature, but I haven't heard any news about stun or death save being implemented into the game. Besides, I don't think that it is compatible with solo gameplay. Combat in 2020 is brutal, and you need to have trustworthy crew who's willing to stabilize you when you're on the floor instead of waiting for you to drop like a flashy piggy bank. That's because any amount of damage you receive can possibly take you out of the picture. Your armor and body type can absorb the damage you take, but the moment you take a single amount of damage, you will have to make a stun or death save. If you have 8 for your body type, it means that you have to roll 8 or below to succeed your stun save. Otherwise, you get knocked out and be left at the mercy of your enemies. The more damage you take, the higher is the penalty imposed to your roll. When you reach the mortal wound level, stun saves become death save. You will die if you fail your death save roll. At this state, you have to roll for death save every turn, even if you are not taking any damage. To make it worse, your character's performance gets impaired the more damage you take. At serious wound level, he or she take minus two penalty to all reflex-based actions. At critical, your character's reflex, intelligence, and cool are reduced to half. And when mortally wounded, they drop to a third. Don't get me wrong, I'm really hyped for the game. I will definitely be playing it when it comes out. But there are some things that only tabletop RPGs can offer that video games cannot. Admittedly, Cyberpunk is not the most beginner-friendly tabletop RPG. With lots of preparation and direction, a good game master can simplify the experience for newbies, but it is still going to take a ton of effort on their part to make it work. If you are new to the channel and you are interested in learning about tabletop RPGs, why don't you check out the How to Play D&D series. 5th edition D&D is simple enough for most beginners to start with, 
and from there you can move on to other games if you find something that's more up to your groove. Alright, that's it for the video. CJ, over and out.